Charmaine Jeremy, good morning to you. Good morning. Yeah, <laughs> twice in one week, right? I know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't but mind. again, different stages, different faces, different hats. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. How are you this morning? I'm great. Yeah? Great. So we're talking about balance. We're talking about support. Mm -hmm. You know, women supporting each other, breaking the barriers, mm -hmm. equality, mm -hmm. all of that stuff that, you know, mm -hmm. we've been striving and fighting for, for donkey years. Yes. But one of the things that always rises to the fore is our support of each other. Yeah. And yesterday, Stacey Russell made a very valid point. She says, the men, you don't find them arguing between themselves or having any envy issues or gripes. They're like, okay, mm -hmm. and they all get along. Mm -hmm. Why can't we all get mm -hmm. along? So there are conversations that we need to have. Yeah, definitely. A lot of us don't want to have it, and a mm -hmm. lot of us do not want to identify with mm -hmm. the issues and challenges mm -hmm. that we face. You've gone through a lot. Yeah within the last uh, few years. Yes. yes. Yeah. And you have a blog. Yes. And, and you've been very open, I very, have. very open, open to the point where possibly yeah. you may be criticized at yeah. times. Yeah, for sure. So tell me about that. Um, so uh, about two years ago, uh, actually, yeah, just about two years ago, I started a blog called formomslikeme.com. And it was really just supposed to be a mommy blog, just documenting you know, my experiences as a mother, as a parent, um, as a wife, which I was at the time. Mm -hmm. And in the last year and a half, it has evolved into something else where I'm now using my blog as a platform for um, having very open and very honest conversations about um, some of the challenges we face as women, especially single mothers. Um, becoming a single mother completely changed my perspective on motherhood. It completely changed my perspective on the role that mothers play in our societies and how important and significant that role is. And um, there's a poem by, I think his name is William Ross Wallace, where he says, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Yes. That is a very powerful yes, statement because it's fact. And I think a lot of the times our moms are overlooked we're undervalued, our role is underscored. Um, we just kind of, I guess we're just sort of expected to be that super mom. Oh yeah, that's just what moms do. But nobody, nobody really sits down and takes a, a, a close look at what it really takes to be a mother, what it takes to raise a human being or human beings so that they are healthy, well-rounded, and, and grow to be healthy adults who contribute positively to society, mm -hmm. we underscore the value in that um, because there's certainly not enough resources um, and support being given to, to moms. Um, it's just kind of wishy-washy. Um, and we, we don't realize that if we can't have healthy moms who are physically, emotionally, mentally healthy, that it has an effect on our society in the long run. Um, in so many ways. Um, also, my blog, in addition to talking about you know the role of moms and and the challenges we face, also talks is also really about uh, breaking the culture of silence that exists in our society as well. I think it's even worse here in the Caribbean yes. because we're such a small community. Yeah. People are really afraid to talk and speak up about things that are uh, ailing them or affecting them, especially if it's taboo. So uh, I've talked about, and persons who fo follow my blog, I have quite a, a, a good following um, on social media, particularly um, from the US and from um, the region, mostly in Antigua. Um, and they've seen my blog post where I talked about becoming a single mom on Mother's Day last year, well, the year before, actually, and how that affected me. I, I also talk about my divorce. I had a divorce party, and for some people, that was like, has she lost her mind? Who has a divorce party? And it really wasn't about me trying to mitigate the sanctity of marriage in any way. It was me speaking out and talking about the fact that I have the right to walk away from an unhealthy marriage with my dignity and my pride still intact. Not walking away feeling that burden of shame or that burden of guilt that we so often feel when we're no longer married or even when we can't keep a man. You know, those are the type yes. of criticisms we yeah. get when we are unable to maintain the relationships that we've been in. So my blog is really also 
just trying to have that open and honest conversation. And I would have to say that Oprah Winfrey inspired me. I, I think it was the Oscars or something where she talked about standing in your truth and your truth is your power. And I think that is a very powerful message that needs to be spread, especially among our women, so that they understand that it's okay. It's okay to fail. It's okay to, to maybe, you know, things haven't gone the way you had planned. That's okay. Just get up and find your power, find your purpose, find your passion, because I do believe that there is purpose in the pain. So, Shemaine, we're talking about open and honest discussion yeah. and, and, and standing in your truth. Yeah. So this takes us right back yes. to who we are and some of those nitty-gritty issues that we face as women. Yes. Because we're very much afraid to confront each other and say, okay, I have a problem with you, but I'd like for us to fix it. Yeah. You know, how can I fix this? You know, what is the issue? What is the challenge? Or just deal with everything that we're dealing with head on. And we tend to sort of just cower into the dark corners. Absolutely. And then, you know, whatever is happening, it festers. I agree. This blog that you have, mm -hmm. talking about taboo matters. And mm. I, maybe not taboo to a certain sense, but taboo in the fact that you shouldn't even be speaking you about having even, a divorce yeah. and issues just, just with... Just go through your divorce and, and move just on. Don't it. say a word. Yeah. Just keep Don't it moving. Don't say a word. <laughs> Why are you doing this? Uh -huh. So this is all part of, of our growth as women. Absolutely. And being able to embrace. What kind of support did you get when you, you know, more or less let that information out? Was yeah. there backlash? I didn't, you know, I... So it's so weird because I, I, I battled with the notion of whether I should actually, you know, write this. Should I do this? Should I talk about this? Because I have a mother that's very private and she's taught me over the years, silence, silence, silence. Do not talk about things. Do not let anybody know anything about you. Keep everything to yourself. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Don't. So I wasn't... Definitely not going to tell her I was going to do this. But I had this innate sort of desire to write my feelings out on paper for some reason. Well, I guess on the net. On the net. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just boiling inside of me. It was, I just felt like something was urging me in my spirit to write it. And I wrote that in a span of maybe 40 minutes. It took me 40 minutes to write that entire thing and I did it on my phone. So it wasn't usually I write on my computer, I step away from it and I, you know, let it marinate and I go back to it until I complete the, the piece. But for some reason, with this particular piece, it just, it was just flowing, flowing. off my fingers on my out. phone. And before I knew it, I just finished it, I let it out and I clicked publish without thinking. And then I said, oh my God, what did I just do? <laughs> and then... Just like that, I saw a first, um, someone responded, responded to, to me and said, oh my God, thank you for writing this. I'm going to read this again. And then I started seeing this, the messages flooding in. Mm -hmm. And then I said, okay, so this is not going so bad after all. And, um, you know, I, I, I think when my mother finally saw it, she finally understood what it was I was trying to do. She was still a little... You know, but she understood. She was like, so now she's fully on board. So she supports the movement. Um, but um, it was very tough to do. And I think it's done more good than anything else. I've had tons of women message me, inbox me. I've been going through the same thing. I admire what you're doing. You've, you've given me hope. Um, I don't know what to do. Can you help me? Where, who do I call? This is happening to me. I'm in a bad relationship. How do I get out? I've had a lot of that. And so once I saw that was happening, then that's all that mattered to me. So I don't know if there were any naysayers. I'm sure they were, but they sure didn't express it to me. Yes, wonderful. And so I've just, con you know, tried to continue the momentum from there. So have you found, Shamine, Jeremy, would you say that doing this blog, mm -hmm. Vomiting, as some of us mm -hmm. would say, getting it out, cleansing.